we cannot end this interview yeah. with you, Tito Boy, without you answering this last question. Yeah. Sex, sex or chocolates? <laughs> Sorry, no more. Whoever took good care of you, whoever you love, say I love you now because tomorrow is never promised. Uh, fight naked. I I, I've heard that the audience ever. naked. That is the. I have not heard it. What is this? I what like is this? Fight naked, Tito Boya. I like the, the defenses are down. Believe me. I don't want to lose the pain because that's my only connection to my nanay. I don't want to lose the pain. Thirsty Hi, Thirsty and Friends. 30. So today we've just hit a milestone for our podcast and chat show. We are interviewing um, a special person for 30 questions with now thriving people, not just women. We are interviewing the boy Abunda, who is our absolute, he is the name that comes up every time Sharon and I plan for episodes, actually. Yeah. What would boy Abunda ask is our main mantra every time we conduct our <laughs> interview planning so again this interview is for all of you people who just want to be inspired it's just full of nuggets of wisdom and yes. it's also a lot of fun and sexy and yes thirsty. and vulnerable and all the amazing adjectives the thirsty and 30 yeah definitely exactly so enjoy the interview guys Okay, we're recording. Oh, I'm so excited. We actually have Tito Boy here. You know, I'm not usually nervous, I, but I'm like a mixture of nervous and excited right now. Um, I don't know about you, Bea. A little sweaty. It's okay. I know. We'll, okay. We'll manage. We'll manage. Well, if you ask me how I'm doing, I'm thirsty. <laughs> oh, that's good. That is our motto. It's always oh, yeah. thirsty to know. And I think you're the perfect person because you're always learning. And yeah, rather... Oh, yeah. Rather than mabudol sa pag-ibig, I think one should try to read and understand how to be somewhat rational when it comes to love and relationships. Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. but you don't always have to be rational. I mean, that, uh, that uh, premise of wanting to be rational brings yeah. you to um, chaos sometimes. Mm -hmm. Just ride the highs and ride the lows of life. I'm Boya Bunda and I'm proud to be here. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Tita Boy, for joining us. Okay, so let's dive in our first question. Yeah. So you've interviewed a lot of people. Can you tell if someone is in love or in trouble in their relationship? That's not in my job description. Mm. Uh, to, to know whether uh, people are in a good state in the context of their relationship. But... Yes, there are indicators. You know what comes to mind? I did an interview with this young uh, tandem. I was doing private, uh, no, not private. I was doing Tonight with Boya Bunda. I was doing Inigo Pascual and Maris Racal, young actors uh, from ABS-CBN. I asked them, if you are given a chance to ask one question to each other, what would that be? That caught them off guard. No, I, I don't know if it was Maris who asked the first question. Parang... Uh, weren't you ready? Weren't you ready last year? Something that effect. And then Inigo said, it was not a question of being ready, but I wanted to be fair to you because I, uh, my, my, my first priority is my music. Napaka-telling, di ba? Yeah. It was triggered by listening. Technically, we call that listening to the body language. Yes, mm -hmm. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And before the show, I mean, we had that short chat. We were talking about Megan and first name basis, Megan Marco and Harry with Oprah Winfrey. I was watching that interview intently. Makikita natin yung body language ng dalawa, di ba? Lalo na nung nagkatabi silang mag-asawa. You know that ako ang tingin ko, they are so in love with each other. But in that particular conversation, I sensed that Megan was extremely controlling oh yeah the, <laughs> you, you better watch uh you, you you know watch out what you're gonna say i i felt that i felt that so tita boy i mean clearly um you have a gift with words um the way you talk to people I and mean, you just get it how did you discover your gift of the gab it's a blessing but uh it's a skill that can be learned it's not as if it was easy for me to get to where I am today or to do what I'm doing today. Kasi, bisaya ako, waray ako. Uh, uh, when I was in college, for example, one of my biggest frustrations was 
when I was at the Ateneo, I couldn't get the Arineo accent. Kasi bisayang oh. kaya ako. Illusion yeah. ko yun. I wanted to be Borges. <laughs> I don't want to lose my accent today. But there was a time when I was not proud of my accent. I was not proud of yung E nagiging E, yung O nagiging O. Mm -hmm. I had to work hard because I wanted to sound like the Manila kids. I wanted to speak like them. Ingit na ingit ako sa mga kutis nila in school. I used to write na nai nai ibang iba sila dito ang babango nila, ang babata nila pero may mga coaches na sila. So, gift of gab, it's a blessing, but it's something that you work hard on. It is a skill, lalo na ngayon naguro na ako. It's a skill that you can learn, and by ako by embracing. Not just your, uh, not just your gifts of yung bravado, dalakas ng loob, magsalita, magopinionate, but embracing your perceived weaknesses. Like yun nga, yung people telling you, ah, yung Manila daw, Manila, you know, pinaka, uh, yeah. uh, or uh, ba but kaya nang tono mo, but kano na, eh, kano nang tono namin. So I learned that by embracing. Embracing who I am, who I was, and I was on my way, and I got here to wherever I am, and I'm that's, still journeying. That's so powerful. I, it reminds me of that film, King's Speech, when they had to put the yeah. marbles inside his mouth, and I wonder, like, those specific things, those accents that you get, you had to work on that quite incredibly, and how long did that take, if I may A ask? Lifetime, like, very, uh, lifetime. Okay. Until this very moment, for example, there are words I don't know how to pronounce. You know, just the other day, I was doing a conversation with a news girl, and I mispronounced egregious to egregious. And dati, nahihiya ako. Dati, natatapilok ako. Pero ngayon, I just say it again. You learn. It's a constant learning. Pero, um, you have to be constant and consistent. Sa amin naman, pare-pareho kami ng salita eh. Walang, walang mali, walang, you know. And this cultural pressure to blend. You know, when I was a kid, whenever I teach, don't, don't be like anyone else. As opposed to, dapat ganito ka, dapat ito ka, dapat ganito ka, dapat hindi eh. I realized that the best way, the best way to be successful, I mean, you know, in that, in that context, in that contextual meaning is to be different, is to celebrate your, uh, I mean, and usually, yung pagiging iba nang gagaling sa weakness. Yeah. Coco, Coco Martin lisps. Come on. He's the most expensive mm -hmm. actor in this country today. You know, <laughs> I didn't know that President Biden was a stutterer as a child. Mm -hmm. He was bullied. So it, it, it usually comes from that difficult experience. Kailangan mo lang ng mentoring to me is very important. Somebody has to tell you, it's okay. It's okay. Your accent, your stammering does, do not define who you are and who you will be. Wow. Diba? Yeah, I completely agree. Like a lot of people think that if you don't speak a certain way, especially here in Manila, you're not part of the upper crust. But I'm a believer an accent is not equal to kindness or an accent is not equal to intelligence. So however you speak doesn't dictate what you are at all. Yeah. So no, that's right. Yeah. And you have a you have a richer story. Uh, mm -hmm. let me share with you uh Chari. Oh we um, love it. Uh 2016 I was keynote speaker of the Asia Professional Speakers uh convention in Singapore. I prepared for that speech. I prepared for that speech. I had, pero ako, I don't write my speeches. I have talking points. Because I know my story anyway. I have talking points. This is how I'm going to start. This is my middle. And this is how I'm going to end. Pero sabi ko, bigyan niyo ako ng profile ng audience. I want to know who my audience is. And I was a finalist speaker. Uh, there was another one who was an actor in Singapore, I think. Anyway. So I went down. Lahat sila formal. I went back to my room. I got a trench coat, torn jeans, wore my boots, and then came down. Wow. The night before that was interesting. I went down to the ballroom because I wanted to know my space. So I wanted to go on stage. Gusto ko lang makilala saan ako magsasalita, saan ang ilaw, saan ang mga tables, how far the audience is going to be from me. I, I went there. 
Uh, I was with my assistant and I just wanted to walk around the stage. That was my boss and said, excuse me, uh, you can't uh, be on stage because this is ready for tomorrow, etc. Sabi ko, paglingon ko, Pinoy. Sabi ko, sandali lang naman. Ay, tito boy, okay lang, okay lang, sige lang, sige lang. <laughs> so I was able to spend some time on stage and um, I spoke to my stage. I, I communed with my stage. I wanted to know my stage. I wanted to feel it. I wanted to take care of the stage and I wanted to let the stage take care of me. Um, I, I wanted to familiar, I wanted to familiarize myself with the space. So I went up, slept, and then came down to that speech. It was the best speech I delivered. Pero alam mo yung alam mo yung talking points mo, alam mo yung sequence mo. When you're when you're in front of an audience, you should be ready to change that. You have to be flexible. I decided to to start my speech. Uh, using the end part of what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, you're never it's sure perfect. until you're yeah. there. Until mm -hmm. you're there. And the biggest learning uh, I got from that gig was it's okay to be uncertain. Yeah. We, we are a show about love, Tita Boy. And you know, it's hard to talk to people about love because, again, they're very guarded when it comes to that. And I feel oh. like you have the skill to, to get things out of people. How do you get people to get vulnerable with you during interviews? And in turn... Are, or were you, it was it easy for you to be vulnerable in return? There was a time in my career when I was so bothered by the dubious reputation that for you to be able to be a guest in Boy Abunda shows, either that time the buzz or private conversations or the bottom line with Boy Abunda, you have to cry. <laughs> Parang, huh? yung parang, there was this notion that you have to be emotional. So meron ako mga guests na di pa nga nag-uumpisa. Medyo uh, na. I think to answer that question is, you go back to your core. You go back to your truth. You go back to your intention. My intention when I am in front of a guest is to tell a story. I'm part of the storytelling process. And I don't bullshit anyone. Like, okay, let's go to my most recent interview with uh, Gerald Anderson. Uh, he had not been asked about the ghosting, about, you know, Julia mm -hmm. Barrett, etc. Dumating ako doon sa set nila. And uh, he was already, uh, you know, in he was already there. Because I traveled for like three hours. Akala ko malapit lang. Pagdating ko, sabi niya, Tito Boy, kumusta? Sabi ko, mabuti. Uh, hindi tayo nagkita ng matagal panahon, etc. Sabi ko nga eh, may magdadalawang taon na, Gerald. So yung pag-uusapan natin, sabi ko, uh, pupunta ako doon kung saan mo ako dadalhin. I'll just listen to your story. So um, I, I knew, I did my research, I stalked uh, Julia, Bea, and uh, Gerald on their uh, social media accounts. I, 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 I knew my space. Pero hindi ako sigurado if he was open to talking about, you know, private matters. E unang tanong ko pa lang, ang sagot niya ay, alam mo naman, Tito Boy, eh, at a certain point, I was the most controversial man in this country. And then, I am grateful. So, yung gratitude, sabi ko, if you're grateful, you should be able to give your fans what they expect you to give. Uh, do don't pumasok yung how much of you are you willing to share? You know, did you ghost Bea Alonso? This is what your fans want. Do naman sa gratitude. Uh, sabi ko, ah, pwede kami mapag-usapan yung nanay. I mean, you know, because you got to where you are, certainly because of so many people. Uh, mm -hmm. Nanay, directors, etc. Mentors. Pumasok na doon. So, two words pa lang. Alam mo nang dinadala ka niya. And he was telling me, that it was okay for him to talk about these things. Al alam mo, um, Chari, am I pronouncing your name correctly? I'm sorry. Perfect. Chari, mm -hmm. Chari guests are uh, peculiar. I mean, this is a peculiarity. Are, uh, you know, when you, when you do talk shows, people come to your set defensive, ready to project, best foot forward, nervous, yun, was uh, we have been taught, and it is right, in the discipline of branding, you, because this is what you are uh, sin. Uh, 
people perceive you to be. So I want you to perceive me as the best. Kailangan walang scars. Kailangan flawless. Kailangan, kailangan may posture. Kailangan derecho ang salita. Lahat ng mga guests natin gano'n. In the process, pag binasag mo yon, when you shake that, ayan, bumibigay yon. How do you have meaningful conversations with uh, people you meet on dating apps, on a virtual world that are not that? Yung in edit, like if I say something wrong, it's completely like edit mo yan or just forget I said that. You're a master interviewer and you're, you just get people to share their heart, their mind, their soul. And if anything, I would like people like men and women that are kind of scared right now to date. How do they pick up the... Boy, this is our trouble now. <laughs> Whatever, dear friends, got married to someone. They're a, a gay couple. Um, one of our dearest friends got married to someone he met on a dating app. I'm not a fan of the apps, the various apps. I'm not a fan. But to answer your questions, keep on talking. I mean, you know, the the, the Zoom, the uh, the virtual conversations, the Whatever app you have, don't trust the messaging. You, you've got at least to see each other. But I, my, this is an opinion, and I can be wrong, but I don't think you can build a relationship digitally. You, you, that has to cross over to at least saying hello to each other and meeting. And, you know, I still go for you guys meeting your parents and um, smelling each other, you know. Uh, feeling each other's hands. It's, you know, I'm, I'm very open about talking about sex. I mean, you have to be sexually compatible. You have to be emotionally compatible. You have to be financially compatible. There, there, are, there is so much, there are so many boundaries uh, on the digital uh, dating apps that will not allow you to know someone uh, profoundly. It can be a good start, pero I'm very careful about saying that apps don't work. Because I'm going to say, boy, we're very happy. We're seven years now. We go, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. That's kind of all we have now. Chari <laughs> Bea, conversations. Yung, you know, like your intention, for example, is to get to know the person better. Huwag masyadong pilit. You know, and getting to know each other better does not begin with, let's start with a prayer or let's sing together. <laughs> they can start with, you know, uh, the little things or the big things. Or what do you think about uh, Megan and Harry? What do you think? Lalabas at lalabas yan dun eh. Pero it cannot be, you know, you cannot know a person in one conversation. But it is also important to listen. It's very, very important to listen. He interviewed Sestralon and her biggest thing to us was just allow it to be a conversation you know just just let it flow because sometimes it's it's gonna be hard and if you let it just flow it will come back and with rewards if you're listening um she's a that was a great conversation woman. she's a wonderful woman and she is a dear friend and again you know when she was kidnapped mm -hmm. and when she came back and did an interview in front of the employees of the Lopez group of companies. She picked me to do her interview. Um, nung isang linggo, she invited me to do an interview again with her. Sabi niya, alam mo kung bakit ikaw ang inimbita ko? Para hindi ako magsalita, para ikaw lang. <laughs> you were in that conversation because we weren't sure if we're going to ask her about the kidnapping because we wanted to. That's how we, you know, we remember her from the news. I was like, what would Peter Boy ask? For yeah. sure, he would ask about the kidnapping. <laughs> and she was yeah. so open. She just started the sentence with, when I was abducted in Sulu, I'm like, okay, we're in. Yeah. We're, we can talk yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Um, ano Chari is, the intention is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The, the technique is, sa atin, lalo na sa kultura natin, hindi naman tayo contrarian, hindi naman tayo, um, hindi naman tayo hard talk ng BBC. We, we are wired to be polite, we're wired to agree, we're wired to be courteous. And para sa akin, tama naman talaga, hindi mo binabastos ang bisita. But neither should be you pandering. You, you know, lalo na pag, you shouldn't pander, you should ask. Alam mo nung in-interview ko si Cez about, uh, about that uh, episode in her life, diretsa, you know, people are asking right now, were you raped? Uh-oh. Because that, that makes a lot of sense. Pero depende yun 
sa konteksto, depende sa uh, depende sa rhythm ng pag-uusap, dadalhin ka dun eh. Dadalhin ka dun. And it was a very difficult interview because I did it a few days after she came back to Manila. You know? I want to talk a little bit about, I was watching this interview that you had for a 10-year anniversary of Bottom Line. Uh-huh. And you said something about, uh, you know, this choice of word or expression that people really have a struggle with. You said that in your personal relationship with Bong, you never let a day pass by saying the words, I love you, which I believe is so admirable because the days are so busy, you forget to say the words that matter. There are some people that can't say those words. So I guess my question is for those people struggling to have those conversations, to say, I love you, I care for you. How? What's your tip for people that are, you know, icebergs in yeah. their very core. Not just in romantic relationships, but let's talk about expression. Lalo na, may mga ibang pamilya kami, I come from a family or even an area, hindi kami sanay na magsabing, Nanay, I love you. Ang isip namin, ang pangmayaman yun, uh, napaka <laughs> elegant. Oh. Na parang, ah, I love you. <laughs> hindi kami nagka-I love you. I didn't even knew, I didn't even learn. I didn't even know how to kiss yung uh, sila nanay, wala, I mean lang kami. Tapos kami, uh, if you're not familiar with us culturally, para kami laging nag-aaway-aaway kasi ang tataas ang mga bosses namin. Okay? But for your audience and for you, I'd like to share with you, I'm not very sure if it was the story of Patti LaBelle, but I think it was Patti LaBelle. I hope I'm correct. Um, she was, let's just say she was Patti LaBelle, the, the great singer. She was invited to perform uh, at the Carnegie Hall. She was the first Afro-American singer performer to have been invited to the Carnegie Hall. Yung pamilya ni Padre Bell, parang lima yata silang girls, mother and then four siblings, all girls. And three of them had passed on before the age of 54 uh, because of cancer. I forgot one on cancer. Okay, so she was preparing for that concert at the Carnegie Hall. And that was huge. First Afro-American to perform at uh, the Carnegie Hall. In the middle of uh, rehearsals, she got a call from her youngest sister, Jackie, who was in Philly, who was in Philadelphia. He, she was uh, in the hospital. Hello, Patty, I'm in the hospital. Uh, I'm not feeling very well. I hope you can come by because I'm craving for your <laughs> Because I'm craving for your uh, egg sandwich. Patty LaBelle is a culinary gem. <laughs> so Patty said, Jackie, um, you know, I'm in the middle of rehearsals. In a few days, I'll be performing at the Carnegie Hall. And this is the biggest break in my career. No black girl has performed at the Carnegie Hall. Sabi naman ng kapatid ni Jackie, okay, but please, please make sure that you come by after your concert. Day of the concert came. In the middle of the concert, she got a piece of paper. And there you are. It said, Jackie passed on. So she was quiet for a moment and she addressed her audience in the middle of the concert. And she said, ladies and gentlemen, I am overwhelmed with emotion and pain. I wouldn't be able to continue with this concert. Uh, But you can refund your tickets, etc. I will give you instructions how to do it. We'll announce another date and I will do this concert. But before you all go, before you all go, Whoever you are with, if you're with your mother, if you're with your husband, wife, if you're going home to your children, to your grandmother, whoever took good care of you, whoever you love, say, I love you now, because tomorrow is never promised. Oh. That's a yeah. Yeah. sad and beautiful yeah. story. Yeah. Now you apply that to the pandemic, you say mm-hmm. now, all we have is now. You know, my moment now, I'm talking to Cherry and Bea, this is my now. This is all I have. This is all I have. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do the best interview. Because I'm committed to, to you guys. I'm committed to who I am. I'm committed to my truth and to my story. And I say, I love you, Bong, every day because it is what is right. To let him know every day that I do love him. Have Despite you- all our bad fights, we would apologize just as passionately. Mm. Uh, I, 
I want yeah. that. I'm going <laughs> to add that to my journal, things I need in a relationship. That's beautiful. Have you heard about this story that when you when couples fight mm-hmm. and then uh, uh, fight naked? I, I, I've heard I imagine the heard. audience naked. That is the I have not I heard. Hear, what is this? What is this fight naked? I like the, the defenses are down. Believe me. I, I, of course, oh it takes uh, you know it takes some. Uh, oh practice. That's the best window. idea. Hindi ka na naman naghugas ng plato. Ang plato, hindi ka nagwalis. Nasaan ka naman ngayon. You need to be creative in relationships. What works for us may not work for you. But it is your responsibility to, dis- to discover what works for you. I want that I to know. work for me. I know. Everyone, I know. At heart. I, I, really know. I know. Deep down inside. Me. Actually, not that deep down inside. I'm, um, I mean, you know, I what's wrong with being a little bit maniacist? I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Speaking, of, speaking of getting naked when fighting, in your podcast <laughs> when no one's watching, you talk about the art of seduction that, you know, celebrities have, politicians have, and some women just naturally have it. For the regular person like Bay and I, how can one master the art of seduction? Yeah, I don't think you master that. I think, you know, you, you just, you know, you learn uh, a new trick and then you do it again. I am averse to the idea of the total elimination of the art of flirtation. Mm. I like, I like uh, men and women to flirt and men and men and women and women to flirt. You don't master the art of seduction. What you do is you discover more tricks in seduction. Tito boy, give us naman, what's your main <laughs> trick? What's your big lambi move? What's your big yeah, move? Yeah. The sexy part about us is that we, 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 we just really talk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One word leads to the other and to the next. Naked talking and naked, naked, naked fighting. fighting. Naked. That's my new strategy. I like that. <laughs> next relationship, I mean, how bad lang pala, walang damit. Oh, Charlie and Bea, when you are in a relationship like mine, we've been together, we're going 38 years. You have to admit that it is not as often as when you were starting. Yeah. But you discover certain things. Sometimes it becomes orgasmic when you just hug, you know? And uh, sometimes it, it changes. It changes. It becomes, believe me, that hindi ko to binibili. It becomes more spiritual. It becomes more physical and spiritual, spiritual and physical and emotional. It becomes broader. Pero pag nag ka pa lang, of course, you have to do it. Keep on doing it. Just yeah. do it. <laughs> I know. Anytime. Like said, hugs Any, are orgasmic. Anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So, Tito Boy, Cheryl Sandberg, the CEO of Facebook, gave this advice to women. The most important career choice you'll make is who you marry. What do you think of that statement? Young statement. I, you know... Marriage, a relationship, is not a career move. I, I, I beg to disagree. Because, if, because that simply means that if you're not successful in your marriage, you're doomed in your career. Yeah. Um, or vice versa, for example. My career is not dependent on my relationship. An independent, empowered woman, para sa akin or man, uh, must be able to recover after a failed relationship. So my relationship sh- should in no way define my career. Alam nyo, uh, let, let me go not to Sheryl Sandberg. I'll, I'll go to Indra Nui, the first woman president of PepsiCo. Ang ganda ng kwento niya. She's now, she sits in the board of Amazon. I don't know if she sits in uh, the board of Facebook. Uh, Indra Nui. She was the first female president of uh, Pepsi. Uh, prior to that, she was CFO. Ganda ng kwento niya because one night she came home and um, she was so excited. And uh, her mother was there. Husband was upstairs with the child. Excited, super excited, because that day she was elected president of Pepsi, of PepsiCo. So, Ma, Ma, you know, this is a, an Indian family. Ma, I have the biggest news for you, etc. Sabi ng nanay niya, before that big news, your child is crying because he has no milk. Go to the grocery and buy milk. Feed your child. Come back to me and tell me your big news. Okay. So and you're talking to the newly appointed president of PepsiCo. So uh, this is a real story. This is part of her book. 
So, sama ng kanyang loob, pumunta sa grocery, umili ng milk, you know, uh, went uh, upstairs and then fed her child. And she's saying, Ma, why do I have to do this? Why not my husband? I forgot the name. Why not, let's say, Charles? Why not Charles? Why can't he do it? Why do you have to wait for me? Sabi ng nanay niya, hey, when you enter the when enter you when you enter this house, number one, you're a wife. Number two, you are a mother. Everything else follows. So now that you've fed your child, tell me what is your big news. So you know, sabi niya, no, I'll just tell you tomorrow morning. No, sabi ng nanay niya, the Indian mother. You tell me now. So wala na, wala ng energy. Sabi, well, ma. I've just been elected a president of uh, Pepsi. Congratulations. I'm proud of you, my daughter, blah, 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 et cetera. Ah, I worked so hard for this position. Sabi ng nanay niya, ito may relasyon doon sa tanong. Yes, uh, Indra. But stop entertaining the idea that you became president of PepsiCo because um, you're so smart and you worked hard. No. As your mother, I prayed for you every day. Okay. <laughs> So when you talk about relationships, um, the choice of relationships, for example, layer din yun eh, relasyon sa asawa, sa boyfriend, etc., and then karera. I really hope the ideal is for both to work, but to suggest that the victory of one or the failure of one dictates the failure of the victor of the other is totally wrong. I'm sorry, Cheryl. It's, it doesn't make sense to me. You're giving me hope, though, because my dad used to send me that article. I had a face na palaging bad boy yung dinidate ko. So <laughs> my mom and my dad would always send me these articles of this quote. They say, who you marry is. I think they were just trying to derail me to the right path. But at that time, I, they had no... They had no power to stop me from dating yeah, who I wanted to date. Stop you physically. But I'm not saying who you marry has no impact on your life. Yeah. But all I'm saying is, uh, you have to put it in context. If it's because uh, I'm not really going to give you any quotes, I because I people take my quotes in the context of where I am coming from. I told you when I was saying that silence is powerful. Yeah, I mean because I I, I just felt that hey, when Martin Luther King said that context was uh, the civil rights movement, the anti-slavery movement. But there are times when silence is powerful. Diba? I mean, context is uh, mahalaga. It's very, very important. Definitely. You have a successful career. I mean, that's ideal. But I don't think one sh should... Uh, <laughs> one should affect the other in times, in, in, especially in bad times. I want to go a little bit with your mother. I know she's so important in your life. And I'm sure she taught you so many things about, you know, she was your compass, as you call her. Yeah. What, what did she teach you about love, romantic or otherwise? Wala ang nanay ano eh. Hindi siya yung ganito. Pero I'll tell you a story about nanay. Many years ago, uh, January 1 was her birthday. We were in our beach house in Samar. So salabas kami, we were celebrating. And then lang, out of nowhere, she told me about Bong. Because we never talked about the fact that I was gay. We never talked about my relationship with Bong. We were, we were living together. And she was closer to Bong. And they would share, they would laugh together. They would <laughs> spend time together. We would go abroad. And, you know, uh, and I love that. Sabi na sa akin, Alam mo, in Waray, because it's beautiful. Alam mo, boy, sabi niya, um, Bong loves you more than you love yourself. So take care of him. Mm -mm, yun lang, hanggang ngayon, dala ko yun. That here is a person who loves me more than I love myself. Wow. That's Does that beautiful. change your perspective to your relationship? Like before that, it was oh, yeah. very different. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Parati namin, Bea, sinasabi ni Bong, uh, at this point, ha, going 38, um, we loved passionately, we forgave, we committed our sins against each other. We, uh, wow, um, our love will always be bigger than our sins. I was gonna ask you about this, uh, this quote that you've said, like, what that? Can you tell us a little bit more of that? Because it just feels so loaded. 
like how, what do you like? Yeah, because people would ask Bea, are you always faithful? No. Uh, mm. Have you always been faithful? No. Has Bong been always? Been? No. We committed sins against each other. We had our ways. We, there were, pero may araw ba na munti kami maghiwalay? Hindi kami naghiwalay kasi ni Bong eh. Uh, we would settle things. We would shout at each other. I can imagine I'm passionate. He's passionate. I'm, I'm uh, voluble. It's an understatement. So, <laughs> and the bong is very emotional. But uh, you take a few steps backward, and ako lagi yun ang yun ang equation ko. Is my love bigger than what he did? If my answer is yes, ugna natin sa yangin ng ora. Salika na, kain na tayo. Is <laughs> my is my love bigger than what he did? Yeah. That's so yeah. interesting. Wow. And that's, simple, and that's a simple question. Mm -hmm. And if you think yeah. no, don't waste time. But be honest. Is my love bigger than his betrayal? I'll, I'll be very honest. Or is my love bigger than my betrayal? And if your answer is still yes, patawarin mo na. Hmm. I also really like what you said about I am never lost. I will always find my heart back to Bong. Yeah. And this is something so rare. I mean, recently, the news about Bill and Melinda Gates really shook the, the tech yeah. world or the universe. And they're the just world. like, how, how can two people really of impact and like such a strong relationship just, you know, not want to grow together? And I wonder with you and Bong, what made you think he was the one? And I didn't know. He didn't know. It just happened. It didn't know. It took a lot of hard work. It took a lot of failures. It took a lot of good steps. It took a lot of living, loving, failing, bleeding, hurting. Pero wala talaga. Uh, pero ito yung deliberate, uh, Bea. To this very day. To this very day. You know when he when he talks to me and says, baby, gusto ko mauna ako ha. Ayoko mauna ka. <laughs> Shut up. I mean, you know, I, I, can't, I can't talk about it, especially after Nana's death, uh, Ayoko. Um, he, he, he talks about it. And then, um, meron pa siyang, uh, <laughs> this is facetiously said, pag nahuli kita, bubugbugin ko lang naman yun, pero uuwi tayo magkasama. Ganon. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very deliberate. Hindi yeah. kami nagpapaligoy-ligoy. Oh, oh. Tapos, uh, and then he'll he'll whack you with a line like, pero just ko naman, sino bang papatol sa'yo? <laughs> I'm sure I like sense of humor like, like that. Yeah. <laughs> and we love to laugh. Mm -hmm. We really love to laugh. Kanina lang, we went under the sun for an hour. Wala lang, rayot yan. We are under the, sabi natin nasa ilalim kami ng manga. <laughs> we, we still find time to enjoy each other's company. At sa kapag kulang, halimbawa, I would, I would complain. Sabi ko, Bong, we're not talking enough. We're not spending time enough. Itong quarantine, we're not talking enough. We're not spending time enough. I mean, let's do dinner together. Meron kami ngayon yung, di ba, the, the dining table. Sabi ko, yung parang sa pelikula, dito ka, dito ako pang payaman. At sa <laughs> So you find ways to enjoy, find ways to excite the relationship. Not everything exciting happens in bed, believe me. Yeah. No. Anyway, next question, Tita Boy. So the prolific <laughs> relationship therapist, Esther Perel, said the quality of your relationship defines the quality of your life. Do you agree uh, with this? No, but you have to be broader. You have to be broader. The quality of your relationships Hindi lang roman. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, the yeah. quality of relationships, yung define may be a very strong word, may affect, you know, the quality of your life. But it should not be the singular, the singular component to a happy life. There, there are many things, you know, like you can have a successful relationship with your husband, but, uh, uh, but a conflicted relationship with your children and your parents-in-law. That, that's different. Or you have difficulty relating with the community, with your friends, or you have a lonely life in the office and you have a bad relationships with your coworkers. So you have to be very careful when you say that relation, a particular relationship define the quality of life. Kailangan, uh, again, um, contexto where uh, Ms. Perel is coming from. But I understand where she's coming from. The ideal, again, is pag maganda ang ating mga relasyon, maganda ang ating buhay. Mm -hmm. Oo. 
Pero again, ang basag ko doon, ang buhay is not just about relationships. Life is more than relationships. Kasi ang nakakalimutan dyan, I liked it when you raised kanina, uh, Bea. I don't know if, you, if I heard that from you. Remember the most important relationship, aside of course from our relationship with God as Catholics or as Christians, it's the relationship that we have with ourselves. That's fundamental. Your relationship with yourself affect largely your quality of life. Ang, ang, ang frame of reference was my life, yeah, I mean, not my relationships can affect my life, but it cannot define the quality. They cannot define the quality of my life. Ako, hihiwalayin ko uli yun. Yeah. Oh, kasi if I don't, I'm not married, for example, but I'm happy with myself. Because it's one of the hardest things to do is to be happy with yourself. And I have a very good relationship with myself. I'm fine. Th that's quality of life. So, you know, speaking of relationships, what about friendships? So beyond romantic, what do you think makes a bad friend and what makes a great friend? Thirsty and 30.